Hey guys, I'm Leo the Racing Driver. Welcome to Channel 51 GT3. We talked about the Swan Neck rear wing the other day, and today we are going to walk you through another very important aerodynamic component of the car, the diffuser. We often joke that all aerodynamics packages are forced. Competition rules force engineers to get around the rules, but some imaginative designs are ephemeral and soon lost to history. Others have had a profound impact on the design of subsequent vehicles, and the diffuser we're going to talk about today clearly falls into the latter category. Early cars and even racing cars had boxy designs. As technology has improved, engineers have become increasingly aware of the impact of wind resistance on vehicles. Therefore, they tried to reduce the ventilation area and reduce the body design. By the 1950s, racing cars could easily reach speeds of more than 300 km per hour by reducing the area of wind and the body. However, as the speed increases, the airflow passing through the car becomes faster and faster, creating a whole new problem. Because the surface of the body is relatively smooth, a high-speed vehicle crashes the air around the body, and the airflow can pass by smoothly. However, the airflow through the bottom of the chassis passes through the exposed suspension, oil pan, gearbox housing, and other components on the chassis, creating turbulence and reducing the airflow velocity. The air flows from the front of the car into the underside of the chassis but does not exit smoothly, which gradually creates a high-pressure area under the chassis and some uneven upward lift. This can lead to understeer or, at worst, take off in place. Therefore, it is very important to keep the air under the chassis from accumulating and make sure it exits quickly. The first step is to make the chassis as flat as possible, which reduces turbulence and allows air to flow more smoothly through the chassis. At this point the engineers were still not satisfied. Could the pressure be reduced to negative to create downforce for better turning performance? First came designs such as the Brabham BT46B and 2J which generate negative pressure on the chassis through fans located at the rear of the car. But the fan design was soon banned for lack of stability after several accidents. But it also means that it makes sense to increase lap times by lowering the air pressure at the bottom of the car to gain more downforce and make turns more stable and faster. Pneumatic experts of the time used a similar principle to today's fanless blowers to suck out the air. This is a cross-section of a fanless blower, empty in the middle, with air passages above and below, working by small airflows around it to drive large airflows in the middle. When applied to a racing car, the airflow is directed upwards by a diffuser, and the airflow from the roof takes away the airflow from the chassis, creating negative pressure and thus a downforce. Such vertical baffles have been added to the design as part of continuous optimization to partition the flow and achieve greater efficiency by reducing eddies. During rain races, diffusers suck up the rain from the track, adding some dramatic effect to the driver's spectacular battles in the rain. Fins on the body of a racing car also increase downforce, but they also increase resistance while providing downforce. Otherwise, with F1's engine power, the top speed will definitely exceed 300 km per hour. Diffusers, on the other hand, can increase downforce with little to no resistance, or even reduce resistance. I looked up a lot of information when I was preparing for this episode. As I looked at these materials, I was really struck by the amazing solutions that these imaginative engineers had devised. They constantly use limited conditions to pursue the ultimate performance, perhaps this is the charm of car racing. That's all for today's episode. If you want to learn more about the technology of racing cars, let us know in the comments section. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, I'll see you next time.